Brownies are amazing. Everyone knows that. But vegan brownies? <laughs> Let's see if we can fix that. Since going vegan, I've really struggled to find the perfect brownie that has everything I love about brownies in a single vegan recipe. On the one hand, you have a lot of vegan brownies that are dry and crumbly and kind of like too flowery, flowery, is that a word? Too much flour. And then on the other hand, you have some vegan brownies that are too oily because they try to make up for the lack of moisture. And that is what I made earlier today as a test brownie. It's one of those like generic recipes on the first page of Google when you search for vegan brownies. It's not really fudgy. It's actually very cakey, kind of like chocolate cake. And it feels kind of flat and one dimensional. It doesn't have that shiny kind of crinkly top that's super gorgeous. Mm -mm. Nope, one sec. So I've been working on my own vegan brownie recipe and today we're gonna put it to the test against this standard issue vegan brownie and have some non-vegan unbiased taste testers compare them and see what they think. It reminds me of something I would get at a gas station. Not pleasant. <laughs> All right, so for this brownie recipe, it's 10 ingredients, nothing super complicated, but as you can see from the ingredient list, these are very classic brownies. Obviously there's no dairy or eggs in this brownie, but it's also not one of those vegan brownies where I tell you it's the best vegan brownie, but then you're like, it tastes like black beans. There's no sweet potatoes in here, there's no oats in here, there's no zucchini in here. These are classic, fudgy, indulgent brownies made for adults. They're adult brownies. I'm chopping up a bunch of dark chocolate, about six ounces worth, and the reason we're using dark chocolate instead of, say, baking unsweetened chocolate is because if you want the highest quality, best tasting brownie, you gotta use really good quality chocolate. So I've got like 70, 72% dark chocolate. If you like your brownies even more adult-like, you could use something closer to an 80% dark chocolate. And if you want something a little sweeter, a little less grown up, you could try like 62 to 65%. We'll set this aside for now. In addition to the melted chocolate, we're also gonna use cocoa powder. The reason I'm using both is that if you make brownies with just cocoa powder, you tend to get brownies that are on the cakey side. If you use just melted chocolate, you tend to get really dense, gooey, fudgy brownies, which I do love. And then if you use both of them though, you get the best of both worlds. So you get fudgy, but still chewy. Cocoa powder is pretty lumpy, lumpy. So we're going to sift it for a lumpless, lump-free brownie batter. All right, so this is seven tablespoons of cocoa powder. I wanna specify that it is Dutch processed cocoa powder. The reason I'm using Dutch processed cocoa powder instead of regular natural cocoa powder is it has a really pure, intense, chocolatey flavor that you really can't get elsewhere. And it goes down a little bit smoother. It makes a huge difference in these brownies. To our cocoa powder, we're gonna add some all-purpose flour. I'm just going to measure it using my scale. If you don't have a scale though, do not do this where you just like scoop it in there. You're gonna overmeasure your flour and with brownies especially, you're gonna get dry brownies, which nobody likes. So instead, you want to spoon your flour into the cup like so. When you get to the top or almost to the top, you're going to level it off with a knife. This is called spoon and level and that is how you should measure flour for all baking. Unless you have a scale, then you can just do what I'm doing, which is just add it by the spoon and you don't have to dirty a measuring cup. And sift the flour right into the cocoa powder. Most classic brownie recipes actually use quite a bit less flour than we're using today, but they also have eggs, which provide quite a bit of structure. And since we're not using eggs, it is important to use a little bit more flour than you'd expect so that the brownies don't fall apart. For our egg substitute, we've got some aquafaba. Aquafaba, if you're not familiar, is just chickpea liquid, the stuff that comes in the can. And I normally like to use it in cakes and banana bread, things like that, to make the baked good fluffy and light. For brownies though, we don't want fluffy and light. Through a lot of trial and error, maybe like six rounds of testing brownies, I learned that if you whip aquafaba for several minutes with some sugar, you're gonna really be able to mimic the structure of eggs. And also you're gonna get that really elusive, shiny, crinkly crust that you rarely see in vegan brownies. When you whip the aquafaba and sugar together for several minutes, it starts to get thick and glossy and fluffy. You'll start to see these waves around the two and a half to three minute mark. And that mixture is going to mimic the consistency of eggs and give us that really nice shiny top. I know I'm gonna get some questions about substitutes like, do I have to use aquafaba? Can I use a different flour? Or do I have to use vegan butter? And my answer, is you gotta use all the ingredients here. I've tested this recipe many times. Baking is a very precise science and you can't just like willy nilly swap out whatever you want. So if you want the best vegan brownies, 
please stick to the ingredients here. I also haven't tested it with other ingredients, so I don't know if it'll work. Now we're gonna add a few ingredients to our aquafaba sugar mixture, some vanilla extract, a generous amount, a tablespoon, some fine sea salt, about three quarters teaspoon, and my favorite ingredient, espresso powder. Coffee has this really magical way of enhancing the chocolatiness of chocolate without tasting like coffee. It just layers in a depth of flavor that you wouldn't get otherwise. If you don't have espresso powder, you can use instant coffee powder, but use maybe just a little bit more because it's less strong in flavor. We're switching to a silicone spatula and folding these ingredients into the whipped aquafaba sugar mixture. The last thing we're gonna do is melt our dark chocolate with our butter, our vegan butter, obviously. And the reason we're using vegan butter instead of say vegetable oil or coconut oil is that a lot of vegan brownies can be too oily, like greasy. Vegan butter does not do that in this recipe and it also adds that nice buttery taste. We're melting this dark chocolate and butter over a double boiler. All you need is a saucepan, add a couple inches of water, bring it to a simmer, and then you need a bowl that can be nestled into the saucepan. You don't want it to touch the water because then it'll get too hot. Using melted chocolate is gonna give us really dense, rich brownies with a deep chocolatey taste. And we're just gonna gently melt the chocolate and the butter together, whisking occasionally until it's super smooth and luscious. You can also melt this in the microwave, but just be sure to do it in intervals at 30 seconds and stir after each one. All right, all the individual components are prepped, so we're gonna pour the melted butter chocolate situation into the whipped aquafaba. You're gonna wanna scrape up as much of this goodness as you can. If a little gets in your fingers or in your mouth, that's also okay. Fold the melted chocolate into the aquafaba mixture with a spatula. It makes this really beautiful swirly pattern. Be gentle, fold with a spatula. Let's fold the flour and cocoa powder into our melted chocolate until it's just combined. Definitely don't use a mixer for this and don't be surprised if the batter is really thick. It should be that way, definitely thicker than a standard brownie batter and it's gonna bake up beautifully. Beautifully. Almost forgot, very important, chocolate chips. If this wasn't chocolatey and decadent enough, we're going to add in some chocolate chips. These are dark chocolate chips, keeping with the dark chocolate theme. If you can find vegan semi-sweet chocolate chips, you can use those as well, but you might wanna cut back on the sugar by a few tablespoons. Chocolate chips are kind of a must in brownies, in my opinion. I love biting into a brownie that's fudgy and gooey, but also has a little chocolate nugget hiding in there. All right, so we've got our eight by eight inch baking pan. I think that's like 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. And it's important to line it with parchment paper so it's easy to pull out the brownies at the end, but also so that you don't have to grease it with any additional oil or butter, because we don't need any additional oil or butter. I mean, come on, look at this batter. She is gorgeous. She's a she, obviously. Smooth out the batter, get it nice and evenly into the corners, and these are gonna go in a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 35-ish minutes, maybe up to 38 minutes, but every home oven is different, so if your oven is not calibrated, really recommend using an oven thermometer. For perfectly baked brownies, bake them until a toothpick comes out with a few moist crumbs. If you get some liquid batter, they likely need about five more minutes. All right, the brownies have been resting in the pan for 20 minutes. Then I pulled them out of the pan using the parchment paper, let them cool for another 20 to 30 minutes. I know it's really hard to wait for brownies to cool because it smells so good. But if you want clean slices, if you want the brownies to be thoroughly cooked, you gotta wait. It's worth it, I promise. This is probably the most perfect brownie slice I've ever created, produced, birthed. Look at this. Ridiculous. It's gotta be eaten by me. This brownie is possibly too good to describe in words, so let's go see what our mystery taste testers think. Let's go. Time for a taste test. Are you guys ready to eat some brownies? Yeah, I'm in. Born ready. This is my sister. This Hi. is my dad. This is my brother-in-law. Brownie number one first. Brownie number one. Hmm. Reminds me of something I would get at a gas station. Not pleasant. <laughs> It is uh, not chewy. It is a bland taste. Yeah, well, I didn't like it. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't hate it as much as that, but... I mean, I didn't say I, gas station brownies are bad. I concur with uh, my, fa my father. Brownie like... should be rich with uh, a lot of chocolate and a lot of flavor. It should have dimples and <laughs> crevices. It should be flaking off a little bit. This man knows a good brownie. Yeah. yeah. All right, brownie number two, are you guys ready? Do you need some water? Yeah, no, we're good. Do you need some water? Wow, they look great. I'd rather, a closer I'd rather have some scotch, but... Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> now this is a brownie. This is what you call brownie. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's flaking off. It has a rich 
chocolatey flavor. It is chewy. Amazing. Mm. Delicioso. It's really good. These are excellent. Any really tasting good. notes from the expert here? These are good. It is chewy and then <laughs> melts in your mouth. It's delectable. All right, so we have a winner brownie. They're mine. Thank you to panel. Uh, thank you to my <laughs> panel of wonderful <laughs> guests and taste testers. If you guys want to see more videos like this where I try two different types of recipes and try to make a better vegan version, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Can I eat more? <laughs> <laughs>